Cool. Okay. Let's go ahead and jump into it. What's going on, guys? I'm here with the one and only Michael Oliver, the man, the myth, the legend. Michael, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Caleb. And yourself? Happy New Year um, to you. I'm doing well. I'm always happy to be on with you because I get nothing but glaring five-star reviews. People so happy that I met with you. I think since our first content piece a while back, and if you guys haven't watched that, uh, scroll through the channel and find it, the first piece. Uh, it was a bit of a shakeup in the sales world, exposing some, some underlying truths to some of the training out there. But uh, today, I actually wanted to talk about one of the most common questions I get asked, or not really a question, but a topic that comes up, which is, how do you actually, as you guys would say, overcome objections? Um, what a, like I want to begin a dialogue around, you know, what advice would you give for someone who's actually having a hard time overcoming objections or helping someone navigate their concerns? Because I see that there's a couple principles and, you know, standard processes and a lot of people saying different things. So, um, but yeah, make, make what you will of that and we'll see where the dialogue carries us. <laughs> yeah. Overcoming objections. Um, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, that in itself is a problem, you know, and there's a cause cause behind that problem because people are taught um you know so many salespeople are really taught that when when someone asks a question um or raises a concern that it's an objection to be overcome and it's not it's a question that's that's all it is and and if you're trained to think that way or you've read that and and you think that way that Anything that comes out of another person's mouth is in the form of a question or a query or a concern, isn't it something to be overcome? Then you're doomed unless you want to use techniques because you created, um, how can I put it? Because someone that can ask you a question or express a concern and that's all it is. Mm -hmm. and, and if you try and treat it as an objection to overcome, you can create resistance immediately on the spot because basically in a sense, in a nutshell, you're telling them they're wrong. Mm -hmm. And nobody likes to be told they're wrong. Mm -hmm. and, if, and if you're not, not answering a question, it also demonstrates you're not listening. And it doesn't yeah, I, matter what mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what comes out of your, your potential buyer's mouth is that you have to listen to it. And you have to respond to it respectfully. And so objections, I mean, here's a definition, um, dictionary meaning of objection. It's, a, it's the act of expressing or feeling opposition uh, or to dislike uh, something or someone. And so if they're, if anyone's objecting to you, they're going to be objecting to your behavior. Mm, so not actually the things you're saying. So if you're using, for example, um, you know, and I've said this so many times and I, I talk about it in, in my ebook, you know, um, how to sell the way people buy is that if you're using one of the three main causes of rejection and objections or resistance, which is presenting too soon or telling people what you think they should hear right up front mm -hmm. or using closing techniques. All right. Um, mm -hmm. Just doing those two things, they're, they're going to object to your behavior. And sometimes they'll create, you, you'll create the resistance that you don't want. So, and, and that's, that's the key to stop, stop creating the resistance you don't want. Cause all you're doing then is having to build techniques to get over the techniques that you created in the first place. And it is, and it's, and it's maddening. It's, it's so unnecessary. I find that it's kind of a little bit like whack-a-mole or those cartoons where you're trying to plug a hole in a ship where you plug one hole and another one pops out. Um, there's one thing I learned from you, which is, um, well, even one of Newton's laws of physics, which is there's always an equal and opposite force. And so the force of which you push, they push back to you. But would you say resistance is the reason why sometimes if you're in a conversation, you can still get someone to walk with you rationally past the concern, but then when push comes to shove, they come back to that? Or what advice would you give to anybody who's dealing with that? Because that's something I've definitely dealt with and I see people deal with where they have enough skill to sometimes actually move the conversation past, think about it, partner, or whatever concern they're dealing with in the moment. But yet at the end of the call, your counterpart goes straight back to that. And the rationality you just built or whatever path you laid doesn't have any relevance. Well, if you've done your job properly in the discovering stage, okay, which mm -hmm. is the second stage of natural selling, First one being the con connecting stage. So you've got to be able to connect correctly, depending on the context, whether it's a cold call, follow-up call, whatever. Mm -hmm. Is that if you've done your job correctly in the discovering stage, that's where you get agreement. See, most mm -hmm. most people think you get agreement in the at the in the presenting stage or the or the uh, at the end of the presenting stage, and then you go into the committing stage. But that's mm -hmm. not true. I mean, when I say it's not true, um, most of the times it's not true. Nothing is indelibly inked in anywhere, you know. Um, but, in, in, but, but generally, most of the time, the, the, 
the agreement is has been in the discovering stage and it's a process of getting agreement in other words you start off with with basically a problem or discovery of a problem and now mm -hmm. what you're doing is you're digging deeper to find out the cause of that problem you know why it happened you know how it's affecting them and so on what have they done about it and so on and so forth you know what would they do about it how serious is it you know and, mm -hmm. and are they committed to changing i mean it's all done in the discovering stage the agreement is made there. All you're doing in presenting is just summarizing it and saying, okay, let's take action on it. All right. And so now, and well, so building on that, so, I'm sorry, so how would you how would you explain the idea of agreement to somebody? Because I think that's a really important one where I think that's something people fail to actually see or feel in the calls when agreements has been had. So how would how would you explain that to somebody? Well, you 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 ask a qualifying question. A simple one would be sort of um, uh, let me ask you, how important is that for you to change? You could even go as far as say so one to ten, ten being most important. What what number would you would you give yourself with regards to to changing that? That's a qualifying question. And if they if they say, "Wow, it's really important," you know, I'm, I'm going to give myself a ten on that. They have just agreed to make that change. Mm -hmm. Okay, they might not necessarily have agreed to do it with you, but you have to assume that they do because you're doing something in natural selling using a natural selling mindset that no one else is doing. And that is you have an you have empathy there. This this is not about sales, about you getting them to your side of the table or you going to their side of the table. You are on neutral ground. You are mm -hmm. on one of the other uh, sides of the table. Okay, on neutral ground, working together to resolve their problem. You know, uh, there's a Sufi saying that saying you know beyond the, beyond the uh, wrongdoing and beyond the right doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there, and it's an energy. And you're yeah. and you're and you're working together. You're working together to make this this happen. And so it, it's about thinking about you know you've got a problem. I might have a solution. Let's talk about it. And you mm -hmm. and you've got agreement in that phase. Have you got agreement by them saying yes? I'm going to buy from you. No, not necessarily. They might do. Interesting. Not necessarily, but you have to assume that it is. This is a time when you can assume that it is because because you've built up the portfolio. You've agreed they've got a problem. You've agreed that they, they need to do something about it. You've agreed that they're going to do something about it now. So let's take action on it. What causes the breakdown of agreement in your conversation? Because I, I feel like there's that idea of rapport, which comes back to you have to have a certain level of emotional, I feel like, awareness to have rapport with someone. I feel like there's a certain stage in someone's development where they can actually feel that in the conversation. They actually have enough space to think outside of the script and the words they're saying and be present. But what would, what, how would you teach, like, what can, what can be done? What breaks down agreement in a conversation and how can you get a conversation back on track? If you find that um, maybe they're not following you the way that you'd like. I don't know. I mean, to me, what I'm hearing is, is that that's going to happen if you use standard sales techniques, which is what most salespeople, sales trainers teach, whether they know it or not, they're teaching standard sales techniques. I'll give you an idea. If you ever hear in a, in a, in a sales training program, uh, the words closing, uh, the mm -hmm. words objection handling or overcoming objections, I don't care what they're teaching. You just bought yourself a fairly standard sales program, sales training mm -hmm. program, because the thinking behind it is based on that premise. Mm -hmm. and, and where I'm coming from is in a natural selling mindset, which is a very different mindset, is get rid of that premise, get rid of that thinking. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the world, you'll see the world in a different way. The world is there waiting for you to see it, except that if you're taught to see it and it's over there, you won't see it here, which is square on, two people talking with each other, trying to resolve a, a, an issue uh, that mm -hmm. they might or might not have. You know, and so, and so just to circle back to that, is that the question comes in my mind from the conventional sales thinking that comes up, get rid of that thinking and that question becomes irrelevant. Mm. Does, that, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It makes me think of back to a moment where uh, I was, um, I forgot where I was. I was at some sort of vendor event for, for some company I was working for at the time. And I remember that there was this guy selling this product that was somewhat innocent. It was an energy drink. And I walked by the booth and I remember asking him some, like one question about the, 
drink itself. And he did this very specific, what I believe was a trained sales tactic. I just remember how gross it made me felt in the moment, which is like, and why would you want that one specifically? And I don't remember exactly what, I don't think he said that exactly, but it's like what you say with the intent or the the energy and the mindset behind it. There's something just about it that really irked me. And I, I still remember it very vividly, just the way he looked and felt. And immediately I just disengaged and was like, yeah, no, I'm in, like, I did want what he had to offer. I wanted to try there giving out samples, but I just remember immediately leaving the booth wanting to go to some place where I felt some sort of like, so I don't know, just away from whatever that was. I felt uh, in, in, intruded. So, but why, I why, do, that's, why, why do you think you, you felt that way? It was so out of context. My energy, I mean, you talk about something, right, which is meeting your counterpart where you're at. And my intentionality of coming to the booth and the state and the energy I was in was just so different than the intensity and the body language of the question he hit me with. But also how this man was standing and how we kind of had a surface level engagement prior to that instance, it was just, it was so out of context that I knew that there had to be some sort of hidden agenda yeah. behind it. You see, that's, that's what I'm talking about. It's an energy. It's, uh, he, no, he, he was taught to ask certain questions, uh, which, which at the back of his mind was, was the sale. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it starts off with the sale. In the back of my mind, I don't think about the sale. The sale, the sale is irrelevant. I'm thinking about, is this person a person that I might be able to help? That's all I'm thinking about. The sale mm -hmm. will come naturally. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and so what you were picking up on was the energy of where he was coming from. And by the way, a perfectly legitimate question. If he changed the energy and responded to you with something like, wow, interesting question. I'm curious, you know, it, it, is, was that a, a particular drink that you uh, actually give me the, uh, the question you asked again? Just he asked, uh, why, why did you want that one specifically? I think there was flavors or something okay. like that. Or what but, was but it that interested you? you? What did you ask? Oh, uh, prior to this, well, I was, uh, well, we just began the dialogue around just, I don't know. I think that there's the shift in energy and the intentionality, but okay. um, let, let, don't worry about it then. So, so I would have asked, and so was there any particular reason why you uh, chose this, this particular, uh, 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 particular drink? You know, I mean, I, I would still ask the question yeah. um, because I'm curious why you chose it there might be a reason and you could give me a dozen different answers and mm -hmm. i would then take take those those answers it might be a non-answer you just say well i'm just sort of guessing say okay mm -hmm. fine you know um mm -hmm. but but it, it gets back to you can ask a lot of these questions which you would mm -hmm. ask in conventional selling but it's where you're coming from which is so important because that is an energy and we are all energy everything is energy Mm -hmm. Everything in this world is energy. Nothing is solid. It's energy. You know, I mean, we go into, into quantum physics and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, but that's where so. we're well, so if you had someone who didn't have, maybe has a light sales background, or maybe has a general understanding of sales as a career. And, you know, there's some, some, some ones of, you know, call phases and just understanding that there's a discovery, there's a qualification, and then there's concern management or objection handling, which comes before the sale. Where would you start someone's journey of actually learning how to effectively navigate concerns and overcome them? Because I think there's, yeah, I would just leave it at that. Where would you begin someone's, I guess it's a hard question to answer because you'd need more context to where they're at. But on average, with a lot of reps that you teach, where do you start the learnings on average? Where do you find most reps are off? And, and what is your process for getting them to a point of, okay, they can actually navigate and overcome concerns? Okay, so you asked a question which had an interesting word in there, which you're still using. Mm -hmm. which is how do you overcome them? Mm. My response to you is you don't overcome them. <laughs> you don't, the moment you see, you're, think, you're still thinking about overcoming them. I don't think that way. I'm not trying to overcome it. And I'm not treating whatever they say as, as, some, as resistance or something that I have to push back on. If I, if I overcome, if I try and attempt to overcome it, what am I doing? I'm pushing on you. Yeah. And if I start pushing on you, if I, for example, lent through the computer right now and pushed on your shoulder, what would you do? You'd resist. You either push forward mm -hmm. and come back, okay? Or you go back a bit and then you you, you go rigid. In other words, you're, you're resisting my response to you. I've just created resistance by not, mm -hmm. by, 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 by treating your, whatever you said is something to overcome. It's something to discuss. It's something to talk about. If you said it, it potentially has some importance. So therefore, talk about it. 
Mm -hmm. And talking about it could actually open up the door. It could, it, it, by, by, instead of responding to it with, with a resisting type of call, uh, uh, response, mm -hmm. is that what they're asking could be a, a, a question, for example, or concern that mm -hmm. opens up an avenue that clinches the sale for you. It, it is going to help them buy it. Right. That's what, that's why the book is called the ebook is called the introductory book, you know, how to sell the way we buy. And it's all about, it's all about your mindset. It's got nothing to do with process. The process mm -hmm. is comes later. The process is what you can get later, which, which is natural selling, you know, the art and science mm -hmm. of selling with integrity. Think of the words. It's an art. It's an art form. You're creating something. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're, 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 someone's handing you something saying, look, here's, here's a problem I have. And you're looking at it. Okay. okay let's, let's build on it. Let's find out what it's all about. And at the end, if it really is a problem and they want to resolve it and they're serious about it, you know, you've just created something. You are a creator of your own universe. Mm -hmm. And that, that's really what we're, what we're talking about here. And this yeah. is sort of deep, deep stuff, but it's all up here. Yeah. And it's not about positive thinking. Positive thinking helps. It's about changing your mindset, natural selling mindset. So it's an mm -hmm. art. It's also a science because it's backed by neuroscience. Mm -hmm. you no, know, it's, it's all done. It's in. It's, 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 it's there. Right. And integrity comes from basically um, authenticity. It comes from empathy. This comes from treating the other person not as an object of, of, of desire, as it were, not as an object that I can get some money from or whatever. It's about treating the other person because they have a problem. Right. And, and we're helping them solve that problem. Right. No, I love that. I love that. Well, building on that, when it comes to helping people solve problems, what advice would you give or how would you approach? I think the idea of second calls is something that I find is a, is a big question mark of, should I take a second call? How many calls should I take? And maybe you'll correct my thinking on it, but how many calls should I take before, you know, I sort of give their more room or less room on the deal? So it's like, when should that, when should we wrap up the commitment or the, or the deal itself? What, what sort of thoughts would you give around second calls and the minds that people should have around that? Cause let's say you enter a call where, um, you know, maybe you're not able to overcome everyone, all the concerns someone's got on, on one meeting and either you run out of time or they generally want to take it away and sit on it. Uh, what advice or what are your what are your thoughts on that? Like what advice would you give for someone who's dealing with a lot of second calls and how can you help them? Or or what advice would you give for maybe shortening the sales cycle if that's even the way I should be thinking about it? Well, my sense tells me we should make a second call on that because that's another <laughs> subject. And I, yeah. I think I think we've covered... Um, a subject here is just I, I think if we just just stay on this sort of the one subject i think um th this is a good place maybe to to wrap it up and bring that into an, another time yeah certainly well as always it's been another incredible session uh here with michael and uh uh no i always love these and i think the biggest takeaway for me was just the whole thing where you talk about the idea of energy. Um, how can you actually overcome concerns more efficiently? And like you said, it all starts with the mindset and getting the energy on point. Um, but with that, any closing notes for anyone who's watching this and, uh, and, and where can they learn a little bit more about you if they don't know already? Sure. Um, well, they can find out more about uh, what I do at naturalselling.com. That's naturalselling.com, dead easy to remember. Uh, there's a courses page there and where I give the courses. Uh, I, I normally suggest anyone that's new is the first thing you do is just read the ebook, get the ebook. It's $7 um, and it will give you what we've been talking about today, it'll give you all the background and so on, the, the cause of resistance and it'll give you the five principles as to how to um, re replace resistance, how to resolve it, how to eliminate it, for example. And it is based on principles, universal principles, and it'll, it'll teach you sort of the energy that goes behind it. Second step would be the course. If that resonates with you, then you can go on the course, and that's on the courses page as well. Um, there's a couple of other courses on there, but that would be the way to go, naturalselling.com. Sweet. And uh, for those of you guys who can't find that, it will actually be linked down in the description below. Yeah, and drop a like on the video down below if you found it helpful so the algorithm carries it around to more people. And Michael, it was an absolute pleasure, and uh, thank you for making the time. Yep. I'm going to do it again soon. That'll be lovely. Thanks. Sweet. Thanks, Kate. Appreciate best. it.